Perhaps one of the most interesting things I've learned throughout the interviews that I conducted is that people, including myself as well, tend to think of technology in terms of devices, so the next iPhone, the new iPad, when in reality a lot of the people I interviewed, especially from the traditionalist age, the, fir the very first technology that they were exposed to was electricity or running water or a phone, a rotary dial party line phone that they had to go to their aunt's house to use. So technology is not always uh, the next, the newest device. When I interviewed a traditionalist, Luzine Wilson, she expressed that if she could have any technology she wanted, money aside, she would have central heat and air. What, if any technology that you don't already have, would make your life easier or better in any way? If you could have any technology, money aside, what would it be? Well, I could have, I'd like to have central heat and air conditioning, but I can't afford it. 100% of the participants that I interviewed agreed that technology had gains and losses. Specifically, Suzanne Letford of Generation X expressed that while she was happy to have a cell phone because it increased her communication in the sense that she could talk to people and not have to be in the same room with them, it also decreased her face-to-face -face communication because she found herself drawn into her phone and absorbed by things on her phone instead of talking to her friends or husband. Um, so, I mean... You know, with every new technology, you gain something and you lose something. And we gained the ease of computerized email, you know, and mediated communication. But we also lose that face-to-face -face talking and those nuances that come with that and the actual bond that comes yeah. with face-to-face. -face. So... You know, you gain something and you lose something. It does keep some people together more. Like friends, I would never know what happened to. I know where they are because of Facebook, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily that we talk oh. that much. But, you know, like if I see them out, I know what their babies look like. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, and I wouldn't have known that or been in contact with them otherwise. So, you've got that. Yeah, that's true. In addition to the gain-loss viewpoint of technology, Celia Larson of the baby boomer generation expressed that if you don't accept technology and at least try to learn how to use some of it, you fall behind, especially in the workplace. And it's also, you know, in the same way that um, people have fought getting cell phones or even, you know, computers in their home, people in the workplace have fought it too, and, um, but it is a necessity in our world, mm -hmm. and that's just the truth. When I interviewed Wally Avid of the traditionalist age, he spoke about technology and mobility, and it was interesting because he talked about how him and his friends would listen to the Lone Ranger on the radio and then come together and share what they had heard and reenact it. And I thought this was particularly interesting because it demonstrates how technology can bring people together even though they're not in the same space physically. Radio, let's talk about radio just a little bit. I was a little kid. I listened to the Long Ranger mm -hmm. on radio. And I was just a little kid. And I thought people lived in the radio. I could see a light in there, for God's That's sake. Awesome. And we'd look in there, but we never could see them. And we would listen to the Long Ranger. And then me and my little playmates would go out in the yard and reenact as best we could, could what, you were what we had just heard. That's awesome. <laughs> Throughout the interviews, there were many different opinions on cell phones. Jason Roberts of Generation X felt that cell phones decreased face-to-face -face communication. Okay, how do you think that your cell phone affects the way you communicate? In what ways? Well, I guess it, you can send somebody a message instead of having to call. You can type in a message. Uh, and two, it causes you to anymore we was talking about it here a while back people used to go visit each other mm -hmm. when people that didn't have no phones or even if they had a landline they'd go visit each other but with a cell phone you can actually i reckon talk to each other and look at each other on the cell mm -hmm. phone it kind of cut out a lot of front porch visits you know mm -hmm. uh, just showing up at somebody's house because we never called to go to somebody's house. Now people will call you and say, hey, can I come over? We didn't call. Mm -hmm. You just, when I was growing up, you just went over to somebody's house. And 
it seems almost rude anymore to just show up somewhere. Yeah. Everybody wants you to call. But Jason Edwards of the Millennial Generation prefers texting over calling. So that kind of, I guess, goes along with what do you think about people being able to contact you at any time? Yeah, yeah, that's why I like texting over calling. Like, people, even my daddy and people, if they just call me, cold call me, there's a pretty good chance I'm not going to answer it, even if I'm not doing something. Because if it's important, you know, they'll call back. I don't know. Yeah. But I, don't, I never really, I don't know. I don't know if I, I mean, I used to talk on the phone a lot, but I guess once I started texting, I just like that better. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's more convenient. Julia Hall of the Millennial Generation, along with almost every other participant who had a cell phone, agreed that the mobility of a cell phone provides a constant safety line. And how do you think that your cell phone affects the way you communicate? Um, well, I think it, it makes you be um, connected all the time, so I feel like I'm always connected. Always. And that kind of actually segues right into the next question, like, what do you, um, what do you think about people being able to kind of just contact you at any time? I mean, I think there's good things and bad things about it. You know, like as a mom, I mean, I think it's great that mm -hmm. if my kids need me during the day, or, or, you know, my mother-in-law, she takes care of them. Mm -hmm. If anybody like that needs me, or if there's a family emergency or something like that, like I like having that reliability mm -hmm. that someone can get a hold of me. In addition, I also asked people how they thought technology had affected Appalachian identity. And some people, like Melvin Hicks of the baby boomer generation, felt that technology had diminished Appalachian identity. So what, if anything, do you think that technology is doing specifically to the mountains, to like this area? Making people lazy. Makes sense. Yes. Elaborate on that. Why do you think that? <laughs> well, uh, more people sit around, like on their phone. Like, as soon as they get off work, they go home, they sit, look at their phone, don't get outside, get any exercise or do any anything much. And then most of them don't cook, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. They just go get them a hamburger or fast food and then. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of going along with that, and you kind of spoke about it, how do you think technology affects like Appalachian identity? So just like the culture, you know, kind of like what you were just saying in the region itself. I think it's hurt it a lot because uh, my, my view of like Appalachian culture is knowing how to I guess you'd say kind of live off the land, yeah. grow your food, preserve your food, uh, hunt, provide mm -hmm. your food, or and know about using a lot of the herbs and that kind of thing mm -hmm. for medicine, medical purposes. I guess you'd say mm -hmm. a lot of the a lot of the people call them weeds, but mm -hmm. there are really herbs that have a benefit to things, and most people have just lost that. They don't mm -hmm. know what any of that is and like I said they don't know how to preserve their food, can their food and I've heard people even say well I'm not going to spend all of my time doing that when I just go to the store and buy it. Mm -hmm. you know? and so I think that, that uh, looking at it from that standpoint I think a lot of our culture is being lost. Conversely, Jason Edwards of the Millennial Generation felt that technology enhanced Appalachian identity because he could keep up with his family through Facebook. How do you think that technology affects Appalachian identity or culture? Hmm. I don't know if it's, it's probably not specifically Appalachian, although it is in a way, but I think that being able to keep up with your family sort of thing, mm -hmm. like Facebook and I guess text and stuff that way, but particularly Facebook, um, I think that's kind of an extension of that, of the way that <clears throat> in the mountains you tend to be more 
connected with all those far-flung relatives anyway. Mm -hmm. And that makes it easier. Um. Throughout the interviews, I asked people how they thought Appalachia could be preserved in the face of many technological changes. In Nina Chastain of the Traditionalist Age, along with many other people, felt that we should use the technology we currently have to preserve Appalachia. How do you think that Appalachian identity and the culture of Appalachia can be preserved in the face of all these changes, you know, technological changes? Or can it, you know, can it be preserved? I think if people use it correctly, that a lot of things that people do that in this Appalachian uh, region, a lot of things that people do can be spread out and let people know what a good area this is. Yeah, that's a good point. And um, if there's not technology, a lot of it is not saved. A lot of history can be saved now uh, much better than it could in the olden days. Mm -hmm. While there were various opinions throughout the interviews, there were also many funny moments. And when were you born? April 3, 1941. I'm old as dirt. <laughs> How old do you think you were when you got your first cell phone? Oh my gosh, I was working here when we got our first really? cell phone and it was so funny. Like, Travis Hicks is a good one if you want to interview him. Because I remember Verizon coming and they had this new technology and it was the cell phone, portable mobile phones, but they were like the big bag phones. Yeah. <laughs> he still has his. Oh my goodness. And I remember carrying that thing around in the car, feeling all big and bad. <laughs> you know, and calling people and it was a big phone and it was just, it was a, a really like novel feeling that, you know, you could actually be on the move and not attached. I don't mean, we had, our phones had cords, you know, we were growing up. But um, it was it was an interesting feeling, and, and you know, then you eventually were all thank goodness because the phone bill was high. Because <laughs> yeah. you want to call everybody, that's yeah. what I'm doing. I drive it. <laughs> and we wouldn't be able to play Candy Crush if it wasn't for computers. That's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> uh, you should go back and ask me about calculators. Yeah. Well, uh, I went through college uh, with no calculator. I had a slide rule and that was my only, other than that all calculations were manual on paper. And uh, my first calculator cost more than my wife's diamond ring. <laughs> <laughs>